most of you know, my name is Wilkes. I am the beloved dean of the South Texas College of Law. And on my own behalf and on behalf of the trustees, the faculty, the staff, and 7,000 alumni of this great college, I am pleased to present to you this living record of a great event in your life, your graduation from the South Texas College of Law with the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence. You know, your journey in this marvelous profession began at South Texas, and we will forever be your alma mater in the law. You know, we are yours and you are ours, and we celebrate with you all that this graduation represents to you. You worked long and hard to achieve this degree. You forsook many temporary things to prepare yourself for a better future. You have earned this day, and we congratulate you, your friends, your family, and all those persons who have encouraged you and sustained you. Now you can sit back and relive your graduation day. May it always have fond memories for you and represent a warm experience. These commencement exercises for the December class of 1989 of South Texas College of Law are hereby declared to be opened. Please remain standing for the invocation by Paul Clayton, President of the Student Bar Association. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, please bless these proceedings in which we participate today. Bless all those in attendance and keep them from harm. Bless these candidates as they venture from these walls and join an honorable profession. Help them meet the challenges that await them in the near future. Give them the inspiration to set high standards for both their personal lives and their careers and the support of their families and friends to achieve those goals. Bless all the students in attendance today and keep them safe in your eyes. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> After many months and years at the South Texas College of Law, years which seem to go quickly for some and perhaps more slowly for others, 154 students of the law have finished this phase of their education and are about to enter today on the next level of this greatest of all professions. I'm sorry to report to you, however, that your education as a lawyer has only just begun. You must continue learning every day in your professional career. The faculty, the trustees, your parents, spouses, friends, and relatives are all here to honor you today, honor you and recognize you for your demonstration of academic achievement and for your determination and your commitment that has brought you to this point today. I want to welcome you all to this marvelous profession and give me and give you my heartiest congratulations. Before introducing our speaker and before recognizing you graduates, I would like to introduce you to the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the South Texas College of Law. Elliot Johnson has been a member of our Board of Trustees for 38 years, having received a law degree from both the University of Chicago and this college. This is an alumnus to emulate. He is a professional, a true gentleman, a civic leader, 
a credit to this college, as I know each one of you will be. Elliot Johnson, could you please stand and be recognized? Would the other trustees who are present today please rise and also be recognized? Would the faculty who have come here to honor the graduates please rise and be recognized? <laughs> Delivering our commencement address today is an outstanding lawyer and jurist. Alice Oliver Trevathan currently serves as judge of the 151st District Court here in Houston. Judge Trevathan is a native of Waco, she attended Schiller College in Germany, the London School of Economics, the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, the University of London, and holds an undergraduate degree from Southwestern University. She earned her law degree at Baylor University, the second best law school in Texas. <laughs> at Baylor, she was a moot court champion. She was a member of the Order of Barristers. Since her graduation, She's practiced law here in Houston with Fulbright and Jaworski and then with the firm of Gibbons, Burrow and Bratton, later Burrow, Trevathan and Williams. She has been named the Outstanding Young Lawyer of Houston and of the State of Texas. And only last month, a poll of the Houston Bar Association resulted in her being named the Outstanding Trial Judge of 1989. She's a member of numerous bar organizations and committees, is a fellow of both the Houston and Texas Bar Foundations. Judge Trevathan is active in civic matters, having served on the board of directors of the local YMCA and the local public radio station. She has been a den leader and is now moonlighting as a soccer coach. <laughs> Judge Trevathan is married, has three children, and is honoring us indeed by her presence here today. <clears throat> Judge Trevathan. Soccer season's over, thank goodness. My name is Alice Oliver Trevath, and I'm the judge of the 151st District Court for the state of Texas. I appreciate being with you today. I don't know if your families realize I'm going to speak to you, but for a moment I'll speak to them. Because I don't know if they realize what a real symbol of excellence South Texas is to many of us in downtown Houston. We marvel, frankly, at the numerous championships in moot court and mock trial and excellent showing on the bar exam. I've watched with admiration that many of the individual students here and their accomplishments, many of whom are working full time and have families of their own. You know, I, I feel a sort of a, a union or a friendship with so many of you. I've judged your competitions, I've attended your meetings, I've enjoyed your parties, I've had the uh, unique opportunity to get to know you as interns in my court. And each and every experience has made me more, perhaps, a proud member of this family than anyone who ever really got a South Texas degree. The pride your families feel, the pride you feel, is quite justified. You have just completed a major accomplishment in your life. You're very special. You know, when Dean Wilkes called and asked me to give this brief commencement address, and I do emphasize brief because you know, I, I remember about celebrations after graduations too, and I know you're anxious. I suggested to him that perhaps if I were graduating from law school, I'd want someone with a little more national stature. And I even tried to think of someone, and I was trying to think who had spoken at my college graduation or my law school graduation, and apparently I wasn't more interested in the commencement addresses because I had no idea who had spoken at either of those. I feel like I was there. I know I was there. And I then went and talked to people about what kind of little address you would like. And I even talked to some of you and you told me to tell some jokes and uh, throw in some war stories and, and wave the flag a bit. Well, I don't know. I gave it some thought. I think you'll agree with me that uh, canned premeditated jokes just usually aren't that funny and war stories are extraordinarily entertaining to the teller. And the United States flag needs very little help from me. So I uh, gave it some thought, and I decided that it was not the stature of the speaker or even the level of the speaking skill that is important. 
but it is the sincerity of the words as spoken. And so, for the next very few moments, you will hear words spoken with the utmost sincerity, unfeigned in any regard. On this day for you of uh, unlimited choices, boundless horizons, and new beginnings, the message I bring to you is one of which I've spoken before. It's very close to me. It is a part of me. And I hope that it will become a part of you, my friends, and now my um, brothers and sisters, so to speak, in the law. You can make the right choices or you may make the wrong ones. It is important for you to accept today that for the first time in a very long time, if at all, you are in control. You can enrich yourself and enrich our honored profession. You can feel that warmth of genuine humility when you realize that you are now part of an ancient and special calling, a calling to service, a calling to not only protect and speak for individuals who cannot speak for themselves, but also to protect and serve our system of law. This distinction, this rank, that we now share this exalted rank of servant is really unmatchable in its stature. You know, in the last few years, we lawyers have spent a lot of time talking about professionalism. We have concerned ourselves with superficial courtesies and outward demeanor. We have drafted and redrafted codes to tell lawyers that which they should already know we are members of a profession, not a craft. We owe one another certain courtesies, and we are required to follow certain traditional modes of behavior. You know, the message of acting like a professional is an important one, but it should not overshadow a much more important reality. Our marvelous profession that the dean talked about has obligations as well as benefits. These are the type of obligations, however, you'll be happy to know that you will gratefully accept and you can fulfill with a, a sense of uh, dignity and a real sense of history. You know, historically, the obligation to serve as a legal counsel was an honored one and not because of some accompanying payment but because of the value received in fulfilling the loftiest goals of a revered profession. I speak to you now when I say that the concepts of human need, dignity, honor, service, and just making a difference for the good of civilized society should never give way to the pursuit of pure financial success. In short, my friends, we must, all of us, glorify legal principle, not legal tender. Perhaps we must be reminded that we must not participate in or passively allow the slide away from the greatness of our profession. And maybe, maybe just a little reminder of our past will refresh our collective recollection, so to speak, of the preeminence of our present. You know, there, there are some of us who have a terrible misconception about what we do. They think that we are all members of some intensely competitive sport. They are wrong. We are members of a profession whose development has traced the development of civilized society. You know, the Advocati in Rome in the second century BC and the Cossidici in the first century BC were, were our ancient counterparts. 
A translation of these terms should tell you something about yourself. Advocate, summoned to the side. Cosa dice, a speaker of cases. We are called to the side, not the head, not always at the head. We are called to the side to assist, to help, to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Maybe the um, magnificence of our profession and its attendant obligations was most artfully described by Marcus Tilia Cicero. He was a great Calcedisi, and you know him to be a great philosopher. Law is nothing more than right reason, Cicero said, calling us imperviously to our duty and prohibiting every violation of it. That call to duty, that glorious obligation, was met again by those early advocates in England. And by 1215, our legal system was firmly drawn. By 1215, I mean, the date seems so amazing to us living now in what is almost 1990. By 1215, our concept of freedom of religion and the absolute prohibition against the deprivation of life, liberty, or prosperity without legal process was formally stated. This love of freedom, this right to legal representation, gave birth to our Declaration of Independence. Patrick Henry, a lawyer and one of its authors, looked at his colleagues after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and he must have seen a little of what I'm seeing here. They were sort of uh, drunk on independence. And so he admonished them, and he said, guard with jealous attention the public liberty. The public liberty. He speaks to you and to me today. Our role as lawyers is so much more than clever advocacy. It is so much more than hard-nosed negotiating and so much more than quiet counsel and, believe me, tremendously more than prompt billing. Our role is to serve and to protect the system that spawned us. Our group of heroes should not only consist of the rich and the famous, but also of those unsung champions of our cause, those lawyers who work for the public good and, and do so even when there's some personal sacrifice. Because you see, they are the lawyers that understand such well-guided sacrifice is absolutely necessary to the preservation of our system of laws. Now, if I was guessing, I would guess you that many of you are probably sitting there now trying to politely bear what you consider to be another esoteric discussion of what you perceive to be lofty and unrealistic ideas. You're lining up a good job. You know the starting salary, the vacation, the sick days. I'm horrified to think that many of you may even know the retirement benefits. The only concept of service of interest to you today is servicing your student loan or your home mortgage. You're absolutely willing to pay whatever bar dues are necessary to fund someone else to serve on a grievance committee or, or to fund someone else to volunteer for the indigent or to fund someone else to write legal articles or you help someone else give speeches and train new lawyers and someone else to volunteer their services wherever it is needed. Uh, friends, the someone else is you. There are no mythical knights that will fulfill your obligation for you. You do not want to fail our profession. And more importantly, you do not want to fail yourself. You do not want to miss that absolute joy that many of us share 
Because you see, we realize we are part of something unique and, and rather grand. We are the descendants of Cicero, Thomas Jefferson, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Justice Brandeis. We can claim their lineage because we accept their bequest of dedication and service. We know that knowledge and ability are nothing without action. And it is that action that you must be prepared to take. You, the advocate, the one summoned to the side. You, the cosa dici, the voice for the voiceless. You, the American lawyer, guardian of and servant to the United States Constitution. You know, if if all this sounds a little corny to you, a little naive perhaps, dreadfully unrealistic, you have just missed a wonderful opportunity to join us in preserving the law, the right reason, calling us imperviously to our duty and prohibiting every violation of it. Thank you very much. Enjoy being with you. Thank you, Judge Trevathan, for your sincere and brief remarks. I know that they will serve as an inspiration to these graduates as they begin their legal careers. The faculty of South Texas College of Law will please rise. The candidates for the Doctor of Jurisprudence degree will please rise. Dean Wilkes, on behalf of the faculty of South Texas College of Law, I present to you these candidates and certify that they have met the requirements of the college for the Doctor of Jurisprudence degree we recommend that these degrees be conferred. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the South Texas College of Law and on certification by the faculty that each one of you have completed the requirements for the awarding of the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence, I hereby declare and, de and, and place upon you and confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence with all the rights and privileges appurtenant thereto. Congratulations. The faculty will please be seated. All the members of the December graduating class will please be seated except the first row. Now as your names are called, Members of the December graduating class will please come forward to receive congratulations from Dean Wilkes and the doctoral hood from Professor Hogan, signifying the awarding of the Doctor of Jurisprudence degree. Margaret Leigh Alexander. Kimberly Ann Allen. Gaspar Gennaro Argelagos. Lee Ann Banks. Pamela Laura Beach. James Joseph Behrman, magna cum laude. Kathy Kaplan Berkman. Richard Glenn Bertelson. Bonnie Lynn Bowes. Anne Barbara 
Corcoran Brady. Mikhail Sandra Brady, cum laude. Wilma Nadine Brennan. Nicholas Severio Bressi. Sally R. Brown. Robert Kevin Birchfield. John William Burnett. Melvin E. Burridge, Jr. Tracy Raymond Burridge. Donald B. Butler. Melanie K. Karstarfen. Belinda Johnson Shagnard. Luis Alonzo Chavez. Glenn Edwin Clark. Nancy Carol Leahy Clark. Otis Malcolm Cohn, Jr. Stephen Earl Couch. Chris William Kraft. Robert William Kraft, Jr. Antoinette Repepi Kramer. John Carl Cunningham. Rosalind Williams Curtis. Michael L. Dahlenberg. Ann B. Daring. K. Davenport. Kyle Addison Davis. Philip Michael Davison. Robert Randolph Debs, Jr. Jane Colette Disco, magna cum laude. Gregory Edward Dumas. Geraldine Rosamond Egan, cum laude. Charles Clyde Elliott. Sandra Lynn Morton Farmer. Patricia D. Ferguson. Robert J. Fredrickson. Stephen Paul Friedman in absentia. Cheryl Ann Fusen. Norman Timothy Gallagher. 
Deborah L. Gallington. Michael David Getz. Keith Frederick Giblin. Jeffrey Robert Gilbert. Keith Thomas Gilbert. Scott Bradley Good, summa cum laude. Roberta Rochelle Grossman. Robert Lawrence Grover. John Gustav Hackbarth. Stephen Ray Hardman. Barbara J. Harmon. Stephen Blake Harpold. Julie Lynn Henderson, cum laude. Elizabeth Doherty Hendricks in absentia. Luis Ricardo Hernandez. Jade Lynn Lavinka. Lori Ellen Hollis. Stephen Earl Hollis, cum laude. Yeah. Douglas Wister Howell III in absentia. Wesley Ray Rasdell. Yeah. Carolyn Ann Alvis Hulsey. Yeah. David Sheldon Hunter. Mark Stephen Hunter in absentia. Patricia Kareen Husbands. Gary D. Jansen. Cheryl Beard Jeter. J. Kyle Johnson. Patrick Marvin Wayne Johnson. Joseph Thomas Kennedy. Fred A. Keyes, Jr. Stephen Joseph Kirker. Kevin L. Colton, magna cum laude. <laughs> Judith Dawn Lamoureux. Nick Clarence E. LeBleu. <laughs> Teresa Letson. Paul Whitfield Llewellyn. Barbara Popper Lipschultz, magna cum laude. Deborah Ann Luby. Susan Jean Lyman.
Robert Christopher McCabe. Rayford Lynn McCoy. Thomas Anthony McHale. Jody Lynn Marcus. Scott D. Mars Cum Laude. Robert Reed Martin. Mary Lou Morrow. Janice Gay Menzies. Elizabeth Jones Minor in absentia. Ronald Mark Morgan. Carol Wyatt Myers. David Edward Myers. Timothy J. Newman. Hai Ngoc Nguyen. James Richard O'Brien. Reed Charles O'Connor, summa cum laude. Patty Beatrice Pace. Robin Carol Palmer. William Eugene Parham. Clifford Lee Parmley. Jean N. Parrish. Robert Mark Payne, magna cum laude. Jean Heisler Pellis. William Harden Perkins. Bertha Lydia Gutierrez Pilgrim. Richard J. Prateritz, Jr., summa cum laude. William England Pritchard III, cum laude. William G. Pulkingham. K. Asha Reddy. Kathleen Ralston Robbins. James Donald Robinson. In absentia, Mark Patrick Ryan. Debbie Bunyak Sable. Linda Kaplan Sakin. Robert Peter Scamardo. Leonard Edward Schilling. Daniel R. Schmieder. <laughs> Winfield Scott, cum laude. <laughs> Thomas N. Sellers. Deanna Dean Smith.
Pamela Irene Smith. Samuel Boyd Smith, Jr., in absentia, Barry Curtis Stevenson. Jeffrey Thomas Strange, in absentia, John Kirkland Stewart. Margaret E. Terry. Daryl Glenn Thomas. John R. Thomas. Robert J. Thomas. Kevin Monroe Venata. Sherry Lynn Van Pelt. Janice Renee Vaughn. Angela Vanessa Velasquez. Paul Michael Villeneuve. Susan Aline Wagenfuhr. Shirley Marguerite Wallace. Bradley Richard Walton. Donald Wayne Washington. John R. Werner. S. Scott West. Christopher H. Westall. Mark Allen Weiser. William Ray Whitman. Matthew R. Willis. Cecil Randolph Wise. may we now have applause for the spouses, parents, and other family members who have given financial and emotional support to these 154. Now, would you all please rise and join, <laughs> and let's join Professor Helen Jenkins in the singing of our national anthem.
Could you remain standing, please? I would ask Robert Scamardo to lead us in a benediction. As we conclude this ceremony and prepare to depart from this place, let us pause and turn our thoughts to the source of all life who dwells within our hearts and offer a moment of prayer. Our hearts are full of, are full of emotion today. Our hearts are full of gratitude for all those who have supported and sustained us during our years in law school. Bless our spouses who have lovingly sustained us, our parents who have quietly encouraged us, our professors who have patiently taught us, and everyone, judges, administrators, employers, and mentors who have helped us along the way. And our hearts are also full of excitement about completing our course of studies. This is indeed a dream which has come true. We are proud and we are happy. We have been blessed with the strength to persevere in our study of the law. May the degree each of us has earned be a constant reminder of our ability to achieve our goals in life. And our hearts are full of anticipation about the challenges of the future. Not only will we soon confront the bar exam, but we also face the challenge of new careers. Bless us with success in our endeavors, and may our lives and careers be meaningful and fruitful. As we go forth today, keep us in your care and instill within us the values necessary to be respected members of our noble profession and worthy alumni of South Texas College of Law. Give us integrity and honesty in all our pursuits. Teach us to commit our lives to excellence. And may justice and truth prevail in our hearts so that we may enrich society and by enriching society, enrich ourselves. We ask this in fervent hope and profound faith. Amen. The audience may be seated. My thanks to all of you. I would ask that you all remain seated until the graduates have left the hall. We are all invited to return to the college for reception in their honor. I would hope uh, that we could all see you all there. This convocation in honor of the graduating class of December 1989 is hereby declared closed. <laughs>